Prince Luis Moreno Ocampo is a lawyer who served as the first prosecutor of the ICC from 2003 to 2012. Rosa Friedman is Professor of Law, Conflict and Global Development at the University of Reading. Good to have you both. Um, before we get into the mechanics, um, uh, sir, let's start with you. Can you just take us through what has been going on in the months since um, we uh, got the news that the chief prosecutor was seeking these arrest warrants? I mean, these are controversial. There is an enormous amount of pressure on the ICC at present. Um, the Israelis calling this decision absurd and anti-Semitic. Um, others who support this decision by the ICC suggesting it is not at all political uh, and should be adhered to. Luis Ocampo, uh, your sense, if you will. Just uh, uh, walk us through how we got to this point and the sort of pressure that the ICC is under at this, at this stage. Well, start with the crimes, because it's very limited to the starvation part of the campaign. The ICC is not making findings or a bombing or genocide. It's just a very limited charge, starvation. And everyone knows starvation happened, because Mr. Galan openly said from the beginning they would do it, and President Biden spent one year begging to Israel to let food and water to go. So. The facts are non-controversial. And the, the legal characterization was, OK, it's a war crime of starvation. And the judges said, you cannot use starvation to attack civilians to, co to combat Hamas. So, and that's very clear. Israel can stop this tomorrow, Becky. Israel can stop this tomorrow. How? If Israel starts today a real investigation against Prime Minister Netanyahu, the case will be stopped in the ICC because right. ICC act when the national country does not act. So, in not go to political consideration. Israel want to stop this? Well, do the case yourself. That's it. Well, the US, and I quote here, just crossing the wires now, fundamentally rejects the ICC arrest warrant decision and is discussing the next steps. We know that in discussion over the past months, these next steps could include sanctions against the ICC. Rosa, before I come to you, uh, Luis Ocampo, your response. Well, President Biden was begging his, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu not to commit crimes. And now he said, OK, but I don't care what does he say. I think it was a mistake. but. I think President Trump is a very smart person, so he will, he will find alternatives. Because it's ridiculous that the U.S. go against the world, expose itself protecting crimes, when Israel can stop this tomorrow. Prime Minister Netanyahu knows very well that he can stop this tomorrow, just allowing a national investigation in Israel. So why the U.S. will go ballistic against the world when it's an easy solution for this, open investigation in Israel. So I think it's something to consider. The U.S. leadership will be seriously compromised here if the U.S. tried to attack the ICC, because the world is with the ICC in this case. And one more well, the, the, This administration, US, of course, is only, US, has only got two months left to run, uh, but it's very likely that these threats of sanctions against the ICC to to completely sort of um, discredit the ICC are likely to come uh, from a Donald Trump administration um, in spades. Rosa, let me bring you in. Luis, I'll bring you back in in a moment. Let, let's just talk about what these arrest warrants practically mean. What are the next steps here? So the arrest warrants um, have been issued, but remember Israel is not party to the International Criminal Court. So Israel is not under mm. any duty internationally to send Gallant or Netanyahu to the court. What it does mean is that if they were to travel to any of the 124 states that are party to the ICC, they could be arrested. Those states should arrest them and send them to The Hague. We have seen in the past that arrest warrants have been issued and people have travelled with those arrest warrants into ICC state parties and not been arrested. So it's a, it's a political as well as it's a legal decision. 
But the next stage will really be what the court decides to do. Now, it can't, it can't try in absentia. It needs to have Gallant and Netanyahu in front of it in order for any trial to take place. And let's be clear, these are arrest warrants that have been issued. They've not decided that there's enough evidence to prosecute and to, and to find them guilty. We have to have due process. We have to have a fair trial. They're simply saying that mm. they think there is sufficient evidence to arrest them or, as my colleague was saying, for a national investigation to take place. Could and should uh, were two words that you uh, used there. Could and should, um, if, if Benjamin Netanyahu and or you have Gallant travel to a country uh, that is signatory to the Rome Statute, that is uh, the statute that set up the ICC, if they travelled there, they could and should be arrested. But as you rightly point out in the past, uh, there have been uh, those with arrest warrants who, who have not been arrested in these countries. There is no mechanism is there to actually arrest anybody who is under warrant from the ICC, correct? Well, the mechanism would be that they would be arrested if they were, they could be arrested if they were in a country that was party, kidnapped right. and taken to The Hague from Israel, which is not a state party. And really what, what's been said by the Americans, just to, to chime in on, on the question you asked my colleague, What's been said by the Americans is this issuing of an arrest warrant for a democratically elected leader, as compared with all the other democratically elected leaders that, for example, went into Raqqa and Mosul recently to fight ISIS or Tony Blair and George Bush for the Iraq war and things like that, looks like a politicized decision. So it actually probably will be a political decision of each country that's party to the ICC, whether they uphold these arrest warrants or not, given how contentious they are. Right. These arrest warrants uh, are against Netanyahu and Gallant for crimes against humanity and war crimes committed from at least the 8th of October 2023 until at least May 2023. That is the day that the prosecution filed the application for warrants of arrest. Luisa Campo, you said all that needs to happen is that Israel stops what are described, you know, in these arrest warrants as crimes against humanity at present. Are you suggesting that if the war stopped tomorrow, if there were a ceasefire tomorrow, that the IC would not pursue mm. this case no. any further? I just want I to be mean, quite clear that, about where you stand. Stopping the crimes is necessary, but will be not enough to stop the investigation. To stop the investigation, right. to stop the arrest warrant, is needed to start an investigation in Israel. So a criminal prosecutor in Israel or a commission of inquiry in Israel investigating Netanyahu for crimes against humanity and war crimes. That is the measure to stop that. And that way for me, I, I, don't, I don't think this is politically because the court also indicted President Putin. The court could indict Maduro. So the court is in... in in, in the U.S., you see as friends or enemies. The court see as criminal or not criminals. That is a different standard. And so that's why I think it's very important for President Trump to understand, OK, if you want to do something with Maduro, the court could help you. So don't kill, don't try to attack the court. And also, when you say about legitimacy, I think the, the, who is losing legitimacy here will be the U.S. attacking the court. Because when you see mm. the decision, discussions in, in the world, the world is a incredibly sad what is happening in, in Palestine. So the idea to stop this is important. And until today, President Biden did not have zero influence. So I think what we need now is stop the crimes, stop the bombing, and to stop, solve the issue of Netanyahu, please organize an investigation in Israel. That is legally will make the ICC stop the case. Right. That had to be very clear.